really excited. I'm going to start over. I, I'm so excited to be here with everybody today. Hello from rainy Iowa. I'm really happy to be here. So I get to share with all of my library media friends how we use Pear Deck in the library and throughout school. And I'm going to share today a lot of ideas too on how we are face to face, but also if we are remote. And so I'm going to share my slides. Okay, I hope everybody can see those and we're gonna share these too. So you can get to all of the links and they will be there with things that we will refer to. And if there's resources that are Pear Deck or even things that I have created, please feel free to use all of these too in your library and your school. My name is Shannon McClintock Miller. I am the District Teacher Librarian and Innovation Director at VA Meter Community School in Iowa. I'm also the Future Ready Librarian Spokesperson. You can find me on Twitter at Shannon M. Miller and I blog at the Library Voice. Now, one thing that I really would love for all of us to do is to think of ways that we're using Pear Deck as teacher librarians. And one thing that's really great is using Padlet to collect these ideas. And so today I put out on the Future Ready Librarian page just the link, and I plan to also tweet this and get more ideas because we have already had so many great ideas that have been shared. And I think one of the great things about using Pear Deck is just seeing how everyone is using it, if they're with their kids face-to-face -face, or even if we're there with their kids remotely. So please keep sharing on there. And I'm gonna share that too at the end. Um, one of the cool ideas that I saw today was this amazing deck of things that have to do with teaching media ethnically. And I think that it's so great because I'm always looking for ideas to share with and just to take in on how to teach copyright and fair use and creative commons and so this is a really great thing to have because we can make a copy and we can even use it with our kids too so thank you for that everybody and keep adding to that and i'm going to share it at the end as well now one thing that i wanted to share at the beginning is just what we're going to go through kind of how our schedule is going to look over the next hour and the first thing that we're going to do is just to look at our role as teacher librarians and how it looks you know always but also especially how it looks right now during remote learning and what we're all going through the next thing we're going to do oh i put five ways but it should be 10 ways on how pear deck can support library media specialists and how we can use it and then just some resources and at the end we'll answer some questions another thing that i'm super excited about are the library media specialist template pack and we did this in the spring and i absolutely love these because they are focused around things that all of us as librarians do. And when we look at the reading prompts and just how we tie in resources like PebbleGo and research and also using the Media Center, I know you will all find ways to use these. And so we're going to share those too at the end as well. Now, first thing that I wanted to do was just to kick it off with looking at our roles. And that, again, if we're at school or virtually or in a blended environment, we can think of ourselves, you know, being future ready librarians and educators through all of the wedges that we have within our framework. And when we look at our standards too with ISTE and AASL, I've been thinking about this a lot. And I think that right now it's so important to look at these in the sense of how our kids are learning and how we're looking at this differently. And a lot of the things are the same, but there's a lot of things that are also different that we can support through digital tools and resources that we use. And so when we take a glance at 
our framework as future ready librarians when we think about being able to empower our students as creators and building instructional partnerships, being able to curate digital resources, those are some of the things that really stand out. But also that sense of really showing our administrators and our teachers and our families how we can lead beyond the library. And I think that Pear Deck is one of those tools that can give us what we need to be able to lead beyond the library. So I'm so excited today to share some of those ways. And this summer we had an uh, amazing Future Ready Librarian Summit. And one of the things that we focused on in our summit and also in a webinar that we had was just our return to learn plans. And these are something that are so relevant and important for us to look at but also to think about using a tool like Pear Deck in the way that we are learning and that we're using our continuous learning plans is so important. And at Van Meter, the school that I teach at, it's a little town in Van Meter, Iowa. We have about a thousand kids, preschool to 12th grade. And when we went to you know, online learning in March, we didn't really miss a beat when it came to being able to collaborate with our teachers and with our students and taking care of who we had at home. And it's something that I love seeing, you know, not only what we were doing in March and April and May, but now that we're been back to school for three weeks, the things that we're doing and the ways that we're shifting things around to accommodate our students being able to be face to face is something that I'm excited to share tonight. And I hope that you guys have lots of ideas too to share as well. So we're going to talk about 10 ways that Pear Deck can be used by library media specialists. The first one is to use Pear Deck to welcome back students for library orientation for students at school and learning at home. And this also includes you know, when we think about teaching our students, it also includes our families as well. And one thing that I did the last few weeks is every year I have a little library orientation for our kids. And I wanted to make sure, even though we're face to face, we really want to make sure that we're, you know, setting the stage for whatever happens. If we're in a blended environment, if we're asked to stay home again, if our kids need to be, you know, flexible with if they're um, learning at home and we wanna make sure that they're connected to the resources that they need. And so this year I just built a little Google presentation and I added Pear Deck to it. And we started out you know, just by having the kids draw what their favorite book was that they read over the summer, but really leading into some of those conversations with their kid, with their friends. And it was so great because some of our kids, as you can see in this picture, they were drawing in their classroom, but we had kids too that were drawing at home because they were following along with this orientation. Being able to share the great events that they could participate in, how they could get to our resources that were online for the library and our maker space and even connecting to our library site and i know that a lot of you have built these amazing you know bitmoji classrooms or libraries and it's been so fun to see these because i think it's a way to really connect our kids but by putting it into pear deck when my kids followed along I made sure that you know at the bottom, you can see that they can click on that link and then they could bookmark it in their Chrome and they could open it up and they could really dig in and see and follow along with what I was sharing. And so that was a really neat way for them to get onto the site and to get into some of these resources like Symbaloo and our virtual maker space, things that I wanted them to see. Um, and have time in and make sure that they had bookmarked and that they had been there so we can go there again. Now, another thing, and I'm going to share this in a little bit, just ways that we can use Pear Deck to connect to special events, but even if it's a choice board that you wanna make sure that all your kids have, you know, putting it in Pear Deck, adding the link to the bottom, making sure that they go there, but even getting some feedback on what they feel about how things are going, maybe in a class or what they're going to learn. 
Now also I put, this was different this year, our library rotations, it's part of related arts. And it doesn't matter if it's library or if it's a you know, class that your high school kids have or your middle school kids, but putting that content in a place where the kids then can see what they're going to do. But again, bookmark it and then go to those links that they have. And that's possible with a choice board. And so when I'm sharing this in a Pear Deck, they can see it and go to that link, but they can also then see that interactive part of the choice board too, and even respond to it in a Pear Deck slide. And so on this one, they're asked to draw or write about the things that they're excited about library. Now, this was something that we did live and we invited our kids that were home to the class that we had for our kids that were at school face-to-face. But you could also share this so it is student paced. And so when you share that link, the kids then can go through it at their own pace and then they can bookmark things as well. And it's even great to share this with teachers and families at the beginning of the year so they have everything bookmarked too. Number two is to use Pear Deck to build your reading community and highlight your virtual library. One of the things that I love to do most is to read to our kids and to visit their classrooms. And it's something that we can't do right now quite the same that we did before. And so it's really important for me and my library associate, Diana, to do some virtual pop and story times. And we started this back in March and we've continued it and it's been so much fun. And not only with us, but even with special guests and authors and illustrators that we have, to be able to bring them in. But after we have these events, we can use Pear Deck as a way to introduce some reading prompts and get them thinking about what they're reading. And so using these slides, and I'm gonna share a link at the end to share some of these that you can then tie into what they're reading, how they feel, where they're reading at, and it's so much fun to see what they draw and write on the slides. This is one that we did with my friend Tracy in the spring. And these are second graders and they were drawing the places that they love to read. And so it's a really great way to tie in your kids if you're virtual or even face-to-face -face or kind of a blended environment as well. Just thinking about things that they love and really building that learning community. When I did my library orientation, the first activity I did just to kick it off was just that. And it was including that slide. And it's a great way to, you know, it's the beginning of the year. And so a great way to introduce some technology to the kids, but also to get them collaborating. And so the kids really, really love that activity. Another thing that we did, just getting them connected to those resources, is I put together a program called Destiny Flicks. And we use Destiny at our school. And so I put a spin on, you know, just Netflix and called it Destiny Flicks so the kids could get to all of the books. And I put it into a slide and added a link at the bottom so the kids could get to it. But then I added some slides that prompt them to think about the books and the audio books that they were finding and if they would recommend them and just to kind of get them thinking about going in and what they were listening to and what they wanted to read. And the thing is really to hook them on seeing this resource. And so just a couple different ways that you could have them type or even draw on the side slide using Pear Deck, but again, just to get them excited. And one thing I really love, especially with our littles, is when you put a slide like this into Pear Deck and you add the prompt at the bottom where it says students can draw anywhere on the slide, when you're showing them a slide like this that just shows like our school library, if I was to ask the kids a question, maybe it would be like, where's the first place that you would like to visit on our school website? Or where would you find an ebook or an audiobook? They can use then those drawing features at the bottom of the slide that they would see, and they can even circle things or even use the text feature to type on it. And so it makes it really kind of an interactive lesson for them to think about the resources that you have. Number three would be to connect to digital resources and databases using Pear Deck. And we use a lot of different 
databases at Van Meter. And one of our favorites is Pebble Go and Pebble Go Next from Capstone. And so when we put together our slides with Pear Deck, we made sure that there was one that said, let's take a Pebble Go adventure. And these lead to a place where kids can draw and they can write about what they're learning in the Pebble Go adventures that we put together in the spring. Now, even though we use these in the spring, these are something that everybody can go in and they can edit and they can change the date on them really easily because they're all in Google Slides. But I love these because they tie into the different modules that are in Pebble Go. And so they're activities that kids can do around being outside and exercise and science stuff, cooking things, drawing, like anything that you can think of they can have an adventure with around the content that's in Pebble Go. Now, one thing that we do when we use Pebble Go in Pear Deck, and we use it a lot, both Pebble Go and Pebble Go Next, they're elementary, is we might make a slide where they have to go like to their favorite module and maybe draw a picture of the article they read, or maybe we have them go into like the animal module and they draw their favorite picture, or the habitat they live in. And there's all kinds of ways that you can use it. But I love also, a lot of times I'll find a certain article that we are focusing on in their curriculum. And then I go to the Pebble Go activity sheets that they have. And if you put it in the slide, that is the drawing slide, they can then draw or write over that activity sheet. And so those are in every article and you can find them just attached to the article at the bottom, have them go then read the article, for example, about cells and then go to the activity sheet to write and draw. So it's a really easy way and it's great because it can be totally virtual, face-to-face -face, or even blended. Um, so great activity to do with all of your kids. Um, using Pebble Go Next, I love the things that they have about um, states and social studies, you know, all the things that we tie in. And in Pebble Go, when we look at the social studies Pear Decks that they have, just the examples that are in the extension, we have lots of great choices that focus around geography. And one of them that I love is on this one, if you choose it from the template deck, you can find that students can drag the icon. And so then they can even flag like your state, but even to tie it in even more, you can do more icons with the country, have them draw their own map and even find like a certain place on Google Earth. And the great thing about Pear Deck is at the bottom, you'll see on here that I have added um, just a link and so it goes to Google Earth and you can add a link to anything and so just like I did in that library orientation this one would take them to Google Earth and so a really great way to tie in just that curriculum to your databases too. Number four is to use Pear Deck to teach and practice digital citizenship skills with Be Internet Awesome. And I can't say enough about this because I love what Google and Pear Deck has done. And I use this in conjunction with a lot of things that we've already have in our library and within our curriculum at Bain Meter. And one of the things I love to use when we kick off the year is the book Staying Safe Online. And this is one that I actually wrote with Capstone and it is a little song and a story and it's just a really great way to kick off the year and to get the kids thinking about staying safe online but what you can do then afterwards is in the extension you'll find under featured content the be internet awesome curriculum and i love this because it has so many things around different things about staying safe and kind and being brave and alert and when you go to all of the resources and you install the Be Internet Awesome curriculum, it gives you all the resources that you need around these four different lessons. And I just wanted to flip through some of these so you can see how neat it is. But once you install them, it goes into your Google Drive. And then you would share these with your kids and Pear Deck. 
and they can see the goals and they can interact with them by drawing and writing responses and talking about questions that they have. And it's such a great way to be able to really interact and have these great important conversations with your kids. And again, it doesn't matter if you are face-to-face -face or at home with the kids or even in a blended learning situation, it's so important to have those. And so Be Internet Awesome is one of our absolute favorite things and it's how we teach digital citizenship skills at Van Meter. Number five is to teach library skills using Pear Deck. And one of the sections that we have within the slides is just using the Media Center. And you know, before we were always teaching our kids how to find a book in the library, but now it's also finding a book online from the library. And so getting the kids to think about how they would find a book and maybe how they would research some of those skills that they have and they can write or draw even their response to some of these questions that you might be asking them around the library skills that we wanna teach our kids. Now, I love being able to select in the extension how we can ask students a question and we can add text to a slide, we can add choice where they have to choose um, maybe a multiple choice question, a number, a website, we can draw or even drag something. And the draggable options are just a really great way to ask some of these questions because I was thinking when I was um, preparing this that it'd be so cool to have, you know, even like a picture of your library and maybe they have to drag an icon on where they find things or you have a picture of destiny up and they have to drag or circle something that you might have. And so getting them to know some of those library skills. One way that we're using it is with our book hub system. And this summer I created book hub like Grubhub and the kids will use this to order their books online. And then we deliver them to the kids because they're not coming to the library. And it's been so fun to just create this and really think about the kids and what they would like, but being able to use it with Pear Deck has made it interactive. And so when I show this to the kids and they get on, they can then read the really simple directions where they have to use the drawing and text tools to write their name in class at the top. Then they circle the kind of book they like. And if they have any specific book that they want to have us find, they can write it or draw it in the space below. So afterwards, when they're done with this Pear Deck with me in when I come to their classroom, then I can see what the different kids have circled so I can pull the kids books that they want to read. And so for our little ones and for our little bit older ones in the elementary, being able to use book hub or even a book menu like this, it can make it interactive so then they can draw on those slides. And so think about you know using it in a way like that where you can not only see what maybe they're thinking, maybe what they're learning, but also what they want to read. And so it's a really great way to use it for librarians. Number six is to build instructional partnerships with Peer Deck through Newzella Daily Decks, Flashcard Factory, subject-based templates, and more. And I can't say enough about the great things that Peer Deck has done when it comes to helping me collaborate with teachers. And when I go into the extension and I look at some of the examples and subjects areas, if it's in world languages or math or science or social studies or ELA, I can always find a way if it's from my preschool kids to my 12th grade teachers on how I can use Pear Deck. And I appreciate that so much because it really makes it easy when we think about how as librarians, that we think about our Future Ready framework and collaboration and empowering our kids as creators, how we can tie into some of those things. Now, Newzella Daily Decks, I absolutely love. And they have partnered with Newzella to bring us these great daily decks that we can find five days a week and we can around different subjects. And the kids then can choose what reading like level they are in Newzella. And then we can choose the slides that we want to show. And our teachers at Van Meter, they use these a lot for bell ringers or the end of the day 
Again, you can use them with kids that are online or face-to-face -face or in a blended environment. And it's great because the kids interact with these prompts that are there, if it's writing or drawing. And I love how it leads to other things. And we had this great opportunity, and I'm gonna share how you can too with Skype in the classroom. Every Wednesday they have been having live Skypes and we had one where we learned about the monarch butterflies and one of the students remembered that we learned in New Zella about the monarchs and it was just kind of a great starting out point for these conversations and then it led into this live Skype that we had and so those things kind of coming together but again, even though we're face to face, it would be something too that you could do totally virtually. Now, this is just a collection of places that you can go for virtual field trips. And I wanted to put that in there because every Wednesday, I love what Skype in the Classroom is doing and they're having these live events. Next week, we have Peter Reynolds for Dot Day and the next week is Minecraft and then the end of the month is Todd Parr and they, have done this all through the summer and recorded them. And so something like, you know, the monarch butterflies is one that you can find, but being able to tie into some of these events if they're live or even archived is a great way to have conversations too using Pear Deck. And so putting one of those in a Pear Deck and having the kids watch or watching it together and then just asking some questions is a really great way to show that collaboration and to help your teachers. Another one that we love is Flashcard Factory. And we use Flashcard Factory all the time for different things. And it's so fun because my son Hagen is a sophomore and they use it, especially in his Spanish class. And the kids love it because you create a list and you have the kids team up and it does that automatically for you when the kids sign in and they create slides, drawing and writing then to become something that is um, sent into the Pear Deck and shipped off and then they can study using Gimlet. And I love this because yesterday we used this with our third graders and it was so much fun to see the kids on the desk. You can see another computer in the center and they're actually doing it with one of their classmates that are at home. And so Gwen was at home, but she still was doing it with her classmates and signed up just like they did. But it's a really, really great activity to do in any kind of you know learning. But that's one that I have absolutely loved. And like I said, you know, all ages do too. Number seven is to use Pear Deck to celebrate special library and literacy events throughout the year. And we do a lot around events and Dot Day is coming up next week. And, you know, Dot is a story about how she makes her dot and it's framed. And so using this template that's part of the library templates is perfect because you can share it and kids can then make their mark and they can sign it. But another cool thing is to use these new great stick together posters. And right now stick together is offering 10 virtual posters for free. And if you've used stick together before, it is the little stickers that you can put together and make a giant um, poster, but now they are virtual. And kids are loving them because they can use them to then create something collaboratively. And it's so wonderful because Stick Together has put some of actually our kids in Van Meter created some dots. And so I made this slide for our kids and it was so much fun because they made their mark, but then afterwards they got to go to the Dot Day sticker board and then put together a Dot Day sticker board with their friends. And again, a lot of our kids, you know, being at home, just seeing that and being able to collaborate together at school at home was so special. Um, they're also looking for three other, just to let you know, three other people um, schools to put in their posters. So if you're interested and your kids are creating dots, please send them to me and I'll send them on to stick together too. Last spring, we also used Pear Deck for Poem in Your Pocket. And so there are some slides 
in the library templates that you can use that make it easy to even change around for your community as well. But any activity or event that you want to do, you can make one and use Pear Deck in so many great ways. Number eight is book clubs can meet in Pear Deck. And we used Pear Deck a lot for our book clubs. And we had all kinds of book clubs last year, especially with our middle and high school kids and like fourth and fifth graders. And it was so fun because we used some of just the templates that uh, Pear Deck had in the ELA section. And so we switched them around so kids could think about the story and even illustrate some of those settings and even ask some of the questions that they wanted to ask within the book club. And so a really fun way just to have the kids interact um, if you're again at school or at home or in a blended environment. Number nine is to use the research prompt Pear Deck slides to make research meaningful and collaborative. And I love these because sometimes, you know, doing research with kids, it's something that when you tell kids it, something that I think is really fun and I hope the kids think is fun, but I think Pear Deck makes kids really think about some of those topics that we need to teach them. And so within the library templates, you can find some of these research topics where it just gets them to think about, you know, brainstorming and keywords and the research that they're doing. But also under the critical thinking uh, Pear Deck templates that they have, I love these two because it thinks that, you know, thinking about wondering what they wonder and how they can really think broadly about topics and using some of these to pull in to really tie into the research that they're doing, but also that process of what they're thinking about and what they need to know. And so looking for some of those two when you're teaching resource. And the last one, number 10, is to use Pear Deck as a special place to stay connected and check in with your students. And I can't say enough about how Pear Deck is so great with this because when we share a slide like this and the kids are able to draw or to write on what their librarian can help you with. This week I had some sessions with just kids that were learning at home and being able to offer this question where you can say like, I can spend some time with you like one-on-one -on -one, or what can I help you with? It means the world to our kids, especially right now. And so some of these that deal with the social emotional learning of our kids and just checking in with them and offering a place, you know, as we always do within our libraries, but offering it virtually is just such an important thing. And so I really think that you'll love those that you find. So I want to share just a few resources. And these are things that library media specialists and educators can use. And one thing that Pear Deck has done such a great job at is bringing together resources on their site. And their site is amazing because it's packed full of things that you can find and resources around all kinds of topics. And they call it the orchard, with, which is so cute. And you can type in what you're looking for, but they also have just great Pear Deck templates. Um, you'll see the one for library media specialist is right there. And it's it's one that we'll share too at the end, but I love looking at all of them that they have and they have a really active social media presence. And so if you follow them on Twitter, or Instagram, on Facebook, you can see some of these two that they highlight. And I love what they've done during remote learning because I can go here or even offer this for my teachers or administrators or parents or kids and find just lots of ideas how we can use them too. I also have to give a shout out to the Future Ready Librarian page. Um, this is a place that, you know, we all go as librarians and even if you're not a librarian as an educator to find ideas, I think we have like we have over 26,000 people I think now that are just sharing great ideas. But the really cool thing is what we've shared to since March is just a lot of ways how we can support each other during remote learning. And so you can check out this Padlet and this collection that I have put together on different places to support us. A lot of the things that we talked about 
in the last hour and Pear Deck included, you know, resources to use online or if it's coding or eBooks, you know, a lot of things that we're using, but sometimes it's great to have them all in one spot and feel free to share these and use these as well. And especially the library media templates, you know, make a copy of this, download it to your Google Drive and use these because they have been a lifesaver for me just being able to tie in some of those important resources, but making it really fun and meaningful for my kids has been just so, so important. And so I hope that gave you some ideas and I am excited to hear if there's um, any questions and things that I can help you with too. I'm going to stop and go to the Google StreamYard. Okay, tell me if my friends here from Pear Deck, will I be able to see any of, oh, here we go, any of the questions? Okay. Okay, I'm going to add, I'm going to answer some of these. Okay, so here's a good one. Um, Never a dumb question, first of all. Um, how would we use this with kids at home, Zoom or Meet, and then put the Pear Deck up and share the screen? So when you share a Pear Deck, they will go to joinpd.com and it will give them a unique code. And then they would join that code and then they could all get on together. And so it doesn't matter if, you know, like in our situation, it's a, it was a little tricky the first couple of times because we have most of our kids at school and then we have some of our kids learning at home. Um, when we had all of our kids virtual, it was almost easier because we were all virtual and learning in the same way. But you use the same thing. They You put it up on your screen when you start a Pear Deck and then they can you know just go to joinpd.com, put in that code, and they're all in the same place. So it's really super easy to do. Um, just a really great way to do. It doesn't matter if you use, I see some questions too, like um, it doesn't matter if you use, you know, Google Meet or Zoom, whatever you're using is the same because you're just, you know, sharing it. Um, even sharing it like in, Seesaw, if you did it like student paste, you could share that link so they could then, you know, see it all together. But I just use it in, you know, in, in Google Meet is, is how we use it, or in Zoom. We used Zoom yesterday too. Um, so it's it's really, it's really an easy way. <clears throat> I'm looking at some other. What platform of eBooks do you work with in Pear Deck? So, for me with my eBooks, um, what I do is I log in. So a lot of my eBooks are in Capstone Interactive. And it doesn't matter if they're if you're finding them like free in Epic or you have them in um, you know, in Capstone Interactive, or if you have a book in Destiny, like it doesn't matter where they are. But if you're in a book, it will give you a unique URL at the top. I copy that URL and I can put a post in here that will help you guys too with this. But I put that URL once I'm logged into that book, I put that, I link that into my Pear Deck so then they can get to that book and then we can interact together. So I know that's kind of probably sounds kind of confusing, but it's actually really easy to do that. Um, you just have to make sure, just like in any database, ebook, anything, that you're inside of the resource. You share that link, you know, with the kids. If it's on a Pear Deck, I do a lot of hyperlinks in them. Um, maybe I add it at the bottom and they get to it like I did in the orientation. And then everybody can be in the same, in the same spot. I hope that made sense. I can I can share more about that too, though, if if it is. Um, I am wondering about the Bitmoji creation and adding to your Pear Deck slide. So the Bitmoji creation again um, with those orientation slides, I just 
grabbed the link to the slide. It's just in a Google um, slide. And then I added that to the bottom of the Pear Deck so they could add it. seeing if anybody so I see I see one that says can we convert any Google slide to a Pear Deck yes you can add any um, you know just that extension that you have within your Google um, slides then you can add any to a Pear Deck which makes it really really great because like I've done lots of especially now making all these choice boards um, within Google slides it makes it really easy to share those because then I can just add that extension um, with that extension, I can add then, you know, just a overlay over the top of a link or getting them to, you know, do something that I want them to interact with within that Google slide too. So one question that I see that um, it says, how does it work with Newzella? So in the slides and um, when you share that, uh, when you look at the slides that we shared and you find the slides that connect with the Newzella Daily Decks, um, it's all online on the Pear Deck site that you can find. So they have done just an amazing job of like curating all of those and you just go to that link and then you um, add it to your Google Drive and you can pull it all up. And one thing that I do when I'm doing the New Zella Daily Decks is I make sure that I pull up the article. And so I have that in another tab and then I have my, just, you know, my slides too that are in the Pear Deck. And so I have both so I can show the kids and just remind them too about like the reading level and how we're able to get to everything really easily. So that works, it works really well. Um, and it works out really good to, if you're, you know, wherever you are, if you're virtual or at school. Um, one question that I just saw was, is there a template to create a choice board? Um, any of the templates that I shared today feel free to use those. And so all of the templates that I have created, I just created by myself and I use them over and over again and we do at school too. And so feel free to use any of those and don't reinvent the wheel, just like make a copy and then make changes. You guys are well, welcome to do that. Um, the New Zella Daily Decks are free actually. And so that is an awesome thing. Um, I, I love that and I love Newzella and so it's it's just a really great thing to use. And also Flashcard Factory is another free resource too. And so I love those as well. We have so much fun with Flashcard Factory. I'm trying to see if there's any other questions. You guys are awesome. I I bet you're all just like learning so much with your kids and back at school, if we're at school or if we're also learning online. I wonder if there's any others. Oh, so how do we get to Flashcard Factory again? Um, that's a link that is in my slides. And I also think that I'm, I'm sure that my friends at Pear Deck will share one too. There we go. And you can get to those. It's so much fun. So Pagan, my sophomore, um, my own kid, he they use it in Spanish all the time. And it's so fun to hear him talk about using it, but it is so fun for, we use it with our littles with sight words. We use it for vocabulary. Um, we even use it, you know, we have the kids create um, their own and it is so much fun. And something too that, you know, yesterday when I saw how it tied in that student that we had at home, 
it was a pretty special thing to see because she felt like she was really part of the group. And so highly recommend checking out Flashcard Factory. So here is one question that is, is something that is really important. Um, so it, this is a question. Did you find that students had trouble managing going between the Pear Deck and the Google Meet or Zoom classroom? Okay, so we, we worked on that a lot in the spring. And what you first have to do when you do that is really talk to your kids about their tabs at the top of the computer and um, other Chrome. And we're working on that a lot right now in case we have to go you know, virtual and we want our kids to be ready. And we worked on that, like, you know, talking to them about like, here's your Zoom, here's your Pear Deck, like how to go back and forth between there. And they did an amazing job. We did it the first time with my friend Tracy with her second graders. And I was a little nervous about doing it and they did a great job, but you want to make sure that you, you know, set the tone for that, that you have them set up for success and just talk through that with them. And they did, they did an amazing job. Thank you so much for all the kind comments. You guys are so sweet. And please, if you have any questions afterwards, um, reach out to me because I am so happy to help you. And I know that they'll be sharing this and it's just was really great to be here with all of you today. And I look forward to seeing how you're going to use it. And please remember to go to that Padlet and share how you're using it too, because we want to hear your ideas because we're all learning together. And so you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Shannon M. Miller. And my blog is Library Voice. And it was an honor to join you tonight. And I hope you guys have a great year and just have a great weekend. It's almost Friday. And thank you again for um, joining me.